Hello everyone, my name is Sandra. I'm from Indonesia. I moved to Australia back to 2001 with both of my kids. Many of my friends have been curious and uh, asking so many questions about how to, you know, how, that how wonderful living in Australia and they're asking how to migrate to Australia. And today we have invited homestead immigration lawyer, Claire. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Sandra. Yeah, we want to ask about uh, her tip and option how to migrate to Australia because as I understand, you are an uh, immigration lawyer yes, that yes. quite experience helping a lot of clients to move to Australia. Can you uh, briefly explain about it? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Sandra, for your kind introductions. And uh, uh, yes, and I have been helping quite a number of people migrating into Australia and also to settle into Australia. Um, uh, I'm a qualified uh, solicitor both in Australia and Malaysia. So I personally been through the migration process myself. So I really wanted to migrate and stay in Australia. That's how I started. So um, the results was quite, um, not quite, was very satisfying and was very rewarding. That's hence I started to go into uh, more into immigration matters and issues and I started to practice about it. So um, I'm very happy that, you know, every time when, you know, I managed to assist uh, clients or family friends to migrate into Australia and they managed to settle down in Australia and then live a very balanced and good life. I'm very happy and satisfying. It's, it's more of the self-satisfaction. Oh, that's good. Can you briefly explain to us about the different ways to migrate to Australia? Um, yeah, so when you Google online, you see how to migrate into Australia. There's so many, many, many different ways and um, it's quite complicated. Um, uh, in, in brief, um, you can come to Australia on either a permanent basis or a temporary basis. So both um, the visas options could be tourist visa, student visas, work visas, business visas and others like a humanitarian or refugees visa. But if you want to migrate to Australia permanent, permanently, the three most common uh, visas are business visas, work or skill migrations and family visas. So on a temporary basis, but you wish to live longer here and then with the visions to apply for permanent residency status in Australia, it could be student visas where you graduated from Australia and then you proceed with like a graduate graduate student visas and stuff like that. So it seems like a lot of way to apply a visa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it seems like also require a lot of money mm -hmm. but I heard that is one option that using skill uh, immig uh, migration visa migration that can yeah. also mm -hmm. help you to spend less money than mm -hmm. most time mm -hmm. so can you also explain which um, skill or occupation easier to apply for migration visa with and the pathway to go to the, the permanent, permanent residence. residency. Yes. Um, well, um, skill is also money. <laughs> so okay. you may income, money, and all of your skill. So it's quite expensive too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well. Um, uh, I believe you are you, you, you would like to uh, uh, know more about skills migration visas. So skill migration visa, visa is actually um, yes, you do not need that substantial personal assets like business migration to be able to apply for a permanent residencies in Australia. But you still need somewhat criteria to apply a visa to Australia. So the criteria are like uh, your age requirement. Most of the skill visas categories got the age requirement which is 45 years old and below. So your skill your skill set is based on the um, medium and long term um, strategic skill list. So um, number three is your skill experience, so your working experience within your skill, like your occupations and uh, your English capacity 
uh, your English language capacity and your ability to attain like a, a IELTS of at least six and above because uh, different occupation would have a higher requirements on English language ability. So, um, so can people uh, apply straight away if they have so, this kind of skill? Yeah, if they meet the requirements, they yeah. can they can apply. So uh, it, it, it all depends on their personal circumstances. So I will, of course, uh, we normally will start interviewing the clients and see if they are um, they they can apply for the visa. If they're eligible, then we will proceed with the applications. If they are not eligible, then we will advise them so as well. So um, you mentioned the easiest occupation to apply. Yes, and you, what yeah. is the requirement to meet? Same. So, um, yeah. Same, so you need to meet the skill set requirements, English requirements, working experience, um, age requirements. But for the occupation, I wouldn't say the easiest occupation to apply, but I would say um, got a higher chance of success to apply because the government would change the occupations on a very, very regular basis. They will also uh, let us know as a migration agent what are the occupations that are being added to the lease or being deleted from the lease. So the recent few days ago, they just released um, the invitation, skill select invitation list that includes engineers, that also includes uh, accountants. And um, we have also uh, uh, engineers, accountants, uh, IT personals, and uh, on top of that, the uh, nurse, registered nurse, are also quite uh, popular and also uh, is an on demand occupation. Mm. But when I mention about accountants, uh, IT professionals, or engineer professionals, doesn't mean that all engineers can apply because you need to look into your job descriptions. Mm -hmm. So it has a uh, uh, a more uh, subcategories like for example if you are mechanical or electronic uh, engineers then your chances are higher compared to others mm. Mm. back of the requirement under 45 years old so mm. what's happened if people you know like they not in that age category people some client is over 45 years old is there any other way if they still you know want to apply to migrate to australia is there any other way to go yeah like i said uh, there are so many um, visas categories mm -hmm. if they do not uh, meet the requirements of skilled migrations uh, we may look into their you know um their personal circumstances more in uh, uh, into that so we we, we will but when we receive or if the interview the clients, we will see all possi possible ways. If the client is not suitable for skilled migrations, we may uh, look into business migrations or family migrations or student migra student visas. Um, student visa is the most common um, categories that we have dealt with. So student visa is where you, you or your kids come here to study in Australia. If you're planning to send your kids to study in Australia and receive tertiary educations um, on a student visa, you can come to accompany your kids to study here if your kids is under 18 years of age. When your kids finish um, uh, schools, high schools here in Australia, they can go into university and choose the course that they are comfortable with and they can apply for a visa. So once they finish their university uh, degree, they can start applying for a visa. It could be straight to permanent residency or it could be um, temporary visa where you can go through uh, uh, after you satisfy a few requirements, then you can apply for permanent residency. And then thereafter, you can apply your parents to come to stay and live with you in Australia. It's a very long process, but it's not impossible. Parents always concerned about their children's education mm -hmm. and their life school as well. So can you recommend to our client about which the school or Australia. yes for international students and how do they apply for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, definitely. We do also have a team that uh, who can uh, assist uh, uh, kids or students which to study in Australia to get enrolled into schools, um, college, or um, universities in Australia wide. Um, 
Uh, let me start uh, maybe explain the school systems here, not system that the difference between schools here in Australia. So um, in Australia we have schools, uh, we have public and private schools. So uh, the, the main key difference uh, between the public and private school is uh, the private school is not funded by the government. So private school is funded by the government. So, um, and private school is actually a so-called international schools, uh, 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 like from, from Asia, Southeast Asia's um, um, uh, uh, residents, they will call a international schools. It's uh, the same as a private school in Australia. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so since private school is not government funded, means that they can have more, um, facilities, uh, more uh, selections of um, uh, 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 extra curriculums and stuff like that. And of course, the tuition fees is slightly higher and it's easier to get in, smaller group of class. But if it comes to public school, government schools, uh, there are more requirements on uh, most of the schools, they actually require a catch-all, uh, like um, a uh, school's catchment area. So you need to live near the area for you to be able to apply to get enrolled into the government or public schools. Yeah, and it's less expensive and it's not that easy. It's less easy, uh, I would say it's not so easy to apply for international students. Not many government schools accept international students. So um, for private schools, um, or even government schools, uh, we do assist clients like in Brisbane. Uh, we have clients get into interplay state school here, but uh, how we assist the client to apply was to look for a homestay with a blue card for the students who live within the catchment of the schools, and then we help the clients to apply for that school. And uh, it's easier if you are already a Australian or permanent residency of Australia. Otherwise, I think it's a bit challenge. You may, but it's, there is some challenge in there. Uh, for private school in Brisbane, uh, we have St. Margaret's uh, Girls School, which is very close to the Brisbane CBD. Which This is a very famous girls school in Brisbane and they accept international schools. Uh, for boys' schools, we have BCC, Brisbane Boys College. Uh, it's also a very popular and famous uh, private school in, in Brisbane itself. Uh, a lot of uh, rich developers, or the high-ranking um, officials will send their kids to this BCC. Yeah. So for Gold Coast, we have, um, among others, many, many uh, uh, schools. We we do have uh, St. Stephen's College. This is a core education school. So they have, they accept boys and girls in the school, but there's no homestay. There's no um, uh, uh, on-site accommodation boarding school. Uh, we also have uh, St. Hilda's Girls School. Mm -hmm. This is a girls school and they have, uh, they, they accept uh, students uh, from prep year 2 to year 12 and they do have boarding schools facilities on site. The other school that we normally recommend to our clients are uh, TSS, uh, the Southport schools. Uh, this is a boys school just like St. Hilda schools. Um, they, they accept students uh, from prep year to year 12 and they have um, facilities on site like boarding facilities on site too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, when we send or decide uh, which school is more suitable for the clients we will choose maybe one or two or perhaps three for the clients to see which one they like of course before we select for them we will we will we will interview the parents and see what what are their options affordabilities what would they want do they want the kids to stay uh, uh, homestay or they want the kids to be on the boarding schools hmm. so it's all considered Thank you for that recommendation. But you mentioned mostly about Brisbane and Gold Coast School. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between, uh, it means that they are all in Queensland. What about the other states? What is the difference and benefit to choose school in Queensland, Queensland. compared with, let's say, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. New South Wales or Victoria? Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned more on Brisbane and Gold Coast because I personally love 
Brisbane and Gold Coast. That's why I migrate to Brisbane. Yes. <laughs> Brisbane is my first choice. Um, when you mentioned what are the differences between schools here in uh, Queensland and also in uh, New South Wales or Victoria and other many states, yes. um, uh, I wouldn't say there's any difference. There's no difference. Uh, the 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 only difference not in terms of educations but i think it's in terms of expenses mm -hmm. so uh living expenses or tuition fees in uh queensland i believe is slightly cheaper compared to melbourne or sydney when it comes to accommodation living expenses of course bigger city it is um the more congested it is it's where you need to spend more especially on your accommodation that's the main difference. Mm. All right, so uh, parents can stay with their children with the guardian visa. If the children start their school since primary school, it means they have to study for 12 years until they're 18. If they start year, year one. Yeah, if yet. they started in primary school. Mm. So it's quite a lot of expensive. So we. We have uh, some cases which is our client decided to uh, rent to buy, mm. you know, like uh, buy the investment mm. so that kids can live in mm. and they also can have investment and it's reduced 12 years of their expenses. Can you explain more about it? Yes, yes. Uh, this uh, rent to buy, I like that term, uh, is a very, um, very, fairly new concept in Australia, especially in Australia. What it means was um, if the, the parents send kids to study here since year one, mm -hmm. uh, the parents uh, buy an investment properties here let the students live here in live in the investment property. So you you actually. Um, how should I put it? You actually service your investment properties with your tuition fees and uh, this is a totally different topic to talk about because um, because uh, it needs to come with your real like analytics and uh, uh, real life experience and stuff like that. I believe uh, we do have uh, a, a topic on this at least on uh, for in the next session. Yes. We have arranged another live discussion about how to reduce 12 years of expenses of you sending your children to Australia to, for, to study. And we're gonna make it next week in Saturday uh, on Home Estate IPP at 3 p.m. Indonesian time on Saturday. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, it's on the 30th of January, Saturday, 3 p.m. And our managing director will be giving you a detailed information on how it works. And she also will be providing uh, analy and, uh, some numbers and figures to show you how it works. Thank you, Claire, for today. It's very good information to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, for having, having me today. It's my pleasure to share some information. Uh, if you need to know more about migration matters or student education, you can contact us um, at the below uh, email address and also contact number, and then we will reply to your queries as soon as possible.